Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an amazing story on what if Naruto summoned a whole monster clan including Dracula, Medusa, Water Monster Lord, Pharaoh Armor, Egyptian Monster Lord, Odakuro, Skeleton Monster Lord, Conninger, the Norse Monsters and many more. The summary will be given in the description. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this. Then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. We join our young hero as he leaves the bustling city center of Konoha to the training grounds that dot along the outskirts of the village. The reason why Naruto is heading to the training grounds was to try out a new jutsu the teachers at the academy talked about in class today. It was called the summoning jutsu, and after the teacher gave a demonstration summoning a squirrel the size of a bulldog, he started to memorize the hand seals and that you needed blood to do it, this had the adverse effect of him not hearing the teacher tell them about how summoning without a contract is so dangerous people have died doing it. So, when he finally arrived at training ground 2, he was prepared to try and do his first summon. Little did he know, but he caught the attention of a silver-haired Anbu, currently off-duty, following him. As he bit his hand, drew up his chakra, and started the hand seals it was too late for Kakashi to warn Naruto before he shouted summoning jutsu, he vanished in a poof of smoke. The Hokage is going to have my ass Kakashi thought praying to Kami that he ends up with a contract allied with their village and not with a different one like Iowa. Page break, location. Grand Castle, Monster Summon Realm, it had been an off day for Dracula that was for certain. It really started when he woke up and he just could not place why today was different, nothing ever changed in their realm, and that is how most of them like it. At first it was small things like a small group of vampire, asking if he could go outside their summons borders to hunt in the My Summons realm, then Frank sending a messenger zombie telling him that a handful of zombies tried to cross over into the Deer Summons realm. After those two events he was close to calling a meeting with the other monster heads, but held off thinking that would be the end of the oddities of the day's events. That was until the hunting party came back with news, news that made him call that meeting. Page break location. Hokage office, time. 25 minutes after Naruto disappeared, as Kakashi was walking into the Hokage's office, having to wait because he was in a meeting with the elders, he was thinking of how to tell the third without receiving too much backlash. Deciding to be blunt as soon as the pleasantries were done, he told the Hokage, the reason I am here is because of Naruto. At this Hiruzen raised an eyebrow and motioned him to continue while packing his pipe, Naruto's reverse summoned himself like Jiraiya did. If the situation weren't so serious Kakashi would have laughed. The unlit pipe clattered on the ground as the old cage turned white as a sheet and looked to have aged 20 years. As soon as the information processed, he quickly bit his thumb and with a panicked shout of summoning Jutsu Enma the Monkey King appeared in all his armored glory. Enma recognizing the look Hiruzen had on his face was almost the same one he had back when Jiraiya had his cough incident, cough happened jokingly said what, did another ninja try to summon without a contract? When Hiruzen's nervous chuckle then silence met Enma's answer, he frowned side then asked, can you give a physical description and tell me about his personality, and I'll send out messenger monkeys to our allies and let you know if anything turns up. Hiruzen thanked the monkey king and proceeded to give him what he needed to find Naruto. Enma gave a deep sigh and got up to leave when Kakashi asked something he was curious about Enma, may I ask what summon realm do you think Naruto ended up in? With another deep sigh Enma responded given Hiruzen's description of his personality, I have three guesses that I'll check into first. First being the Rhino clan, second being the Toad clan, the third I'd hazard a guess and say the Hyena clan. After that I'll send messengers out to the other clans to let them know. And with that he poofed back home. Page break location. Said Lekoswari, time. Five minutes since the hunting party returned, Dracula sighed, he remembered now why he dislikes the meetings as he looked around the table to the other faction bosses. The way the monster contract worked was complex with the true boss of the clan asleep since the time the Ten Tails attacked, prophesied by the Fate Sisters, that one of their summoners would wake the mighty boss. Until that time Dracula was the acting boss, he saw all but the sisters there, and that was hardly a surprise as they were usually the busiest of all of them. Dracula was snapped from his thoughts as Medusa spoke, why have you summoned this meeting I was very busy at the time. Sparing a brief glance at Sato, Dracula made a mental note to talk to the Odakuro later. Dracula mentally sighed and rose I believe I have found us a potential summoner. He said pausing to gauge their reactions. He was well rewarded because he got bombarded by questions. After a while he raised his hand to silence the room and begins to weave his tale it was but 10 minutes ago that my hunting party brought me a human child around the age of 10 clad in orange and he has an extremely high amount of chakra. I will recall this meeting when the boy wakes up. Then he will have to go through the trails. I only called this meeting to give you a heads up so you can tell your factions. Naruto begins to stir trying to think of what happened. He was entirely sure he did the jutsu correctly, but if that was true then where was he? 
He looked around and noticed he was in a bedroom it looked to be sparsely furnished with just the bed he was laying on and two rugs one to the right side of the twin-sized bed and one in front of one of the two doors. He noted that even though there was no fan, it was entirely cool in the stone room he was in. He was broken from his observations when the shrunken head on the door without the mat spoke up Dracula, we'll be here shortly to take you before the council. Before Naruto could begin bombarding the shrunken head with the questions he was greeted with an interesting sight. Through the door the head was on walked in a man that was around 6 foot 5, more than a foot taller than his short 5 foot 2 frame, with skin that could make Sasuke look tan. The man was clad in what looked to be a black cloak going all the way to the man's ankles, showing his black leather dress shoes. It was when the man spoke that he noticed he had a certain soothing quality when he spoke one that you know he could convince people his point of view was the right one. May I ask for your name young one? Dracula asked trying to keep the curiosity out of his voice. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. I am training to become the best ninja in Konoha, I'll work my hardest to become the Hokage, so that way people would have to start treating at me like I'm somebody, believe it. Naruto said with enthusiasm. Dracula had to think for a moment, if he became a ninja, he would be a great candidate for a summoner. Not to mention he's overheard good things of Konoha from the Deer Clan, saying it's one of the most accepting of the villages, so that should help the council's decision on if he should be a summoner. He snapped out of his musings and motioned for Naruto to follow him and led the boy out of the castle. Naruto was in awe he knew if Dracula weren't there he would have gotten lost in the castle, not to mention the next building they were approaching looked to be intriguing. It looked to be a monastery, but it had a lot of what looked like bones on the front, making a circular shield with what looked to be an open maw of a giant monster, closing down on what looked to be a small human. But that wasn't what gave him the shivers it was when they opened the doors that he almost pissed his pants. On the inside there were two hallways on either side leading down to a basement lit with skull torches, luckily not all human skulls, but it really was the room in front of him that held a long rectangular table leading to the back of the room, where it opened to what would have been a nice view of a large lake, had it not been for the creature that looked to be on the other side of the railing, with the longest neck he had ever seen the neck itself, only able to see about 8 feet of its neck covered in sea green colored scales, on the bottom and ocean blue colored scales on the top before it disappeared below the balcony, and he assumed went much further down. On the left side of the table he saw a 5 foot 8 woman with what he thought looked like snakes for hair and a snake-like tail instead of legs, the scales being an emerald green with a forest green camo pattern and a white scale underbelly. To her right there seemed to be a 7 foot albino werewolf that had foot long pristine white claws that looked like they could rip a man in half with ease. Taking the seat to the right of the werewolf was an 8 foot tall man with gray skin and stitches running across the bulk of his visible frame with pulsating muscles that looked like he could wield a large zambato with ease. There was an empty chair at the end closest to Naruto that he assumed Dracula sat at. On the right side of the table across from the half-snake lady was a hulking 15-foot tall skeleton with polished white bones with nicks and cuts across the entire frame. On the right of the skeleton was a 6-foot tall person wrapped up in faded yellow bandages with patches of a greenish-gray skin underneath and excess bandages dangling off its wrists. The final being at the table was an impressive 13 feet tall with stone-colored skin, and a jagged wooden crown lay atop his head with what looked to be two six-foot-long spears on his back, and an eight-foot two-handed axe lay right next to him, looking just as sharp as the werewolf's claws. Naruto knew if they wanted to they could all kill him easily without a second thought, so he smartly decided to not anger them. As Naruto was making his observations of the room's occupants, Dracula decided to take his chair glad to see you could all make it, this young boy is Naruto Uzumaki, a ninja in training for Konoha. Seeing that he was done he gestured for the members to introduce themselves to young Naruto. Naruto my name is Medusa, I am a gorgon, I represent the Greek monsters aligned to the contract. The half-snake lady introduced herself. The werewolf spoke next my name is Zevan, I am a werewolf, and I represent my fellow werewolves, Wendigos, and Sir Kapala. Dracula perked up at the mention of that rascally chupacabra asking and how is Kapala doing. Before Zevan could respond he got cut off with an angry glare from the stitched man next to him, that can wait till this is sorted out. My name is Frank Young One. I am a golem made from dead people's flesh hence the stitching. I represent the golems, zombies, and the sasquatches. At a cough, all eyes turned to the other side of the table to the being with the crown my name is Conninger, I am a troll, and I represent the Norse monsters aligned to the contract. Taking that as a K the bandaged man spoke next my name is Pharaoh Narmer, I am a mummy, and I represent the Egyptian monsters aligned to the contract. Seeing the attention of the others, the giant skeleton introduced itself my name is Sato, I am an Otakuro, and I represent the skeletons and the Japanese monsters aligned to the contract. Seeing that besides Dracula it was the only one who hadn't introduced itself, yet the long-necked creature spoke my name is Ness, I am a plesiosaur, I represent all the water monsters in the contract. 
Noticing that everyone was done Dracula stood up and decided to finish off the introductions and move on with business in one fell swoop, you know me Naruto, but did you know I am a vampire, I speak for the vampires, ghosts, and other flying type monsters. I also happen to be the acting boss. Now that confused Naruto and he voiced as such what do you mean acting boss. Dracula said he really didn't want to answer, then he thought of a way to postpone the tell you what if you can pass one of our tests and earn the right to summon the monsters of the contract I'll tell you in the presence of the hokage that way, I don't have to repeat myself okay. To which Naruto full hardheartedly agreed not hearing the snickers coming from all the faction bosses. So Naruto how a person is to get accepted to the contract is by passing at least four of our tests, we will waive this for you and only make it one, but completing the standard four will greatly increase your standing among the clan's members. Dracula began waving a hand to the other members of the council. Naruto was about to shout to bring all the challenges on at once, but was promptly stopped with a raised hand, and a pointed look from Dracula told him to wait till he is finished. Now Ness, Zeven, and I have a similar test. We each would take some of your chakra and taste it to see if you have an affinity to what goes well with our respected clans. Now Medusa and Narmer have a test of will. While Frank and Conninger have a test of physical and nature connection strength respectively, and lastly we have Sato's test of endurance, you can take these challenges at any time and in any order. You just have to say when. Dracula finished. After seeing he was waiting for an answer he decided to get all three chakra tests done at once and questioned if he could do that. Dracula said they could do all three at one time, but it would leave him feeling drained. Well what kind of ninja would be if I stop the mission even if I'm tired? Naruto questioned earning him respect from the three as he moved with confidence closer to Ness, with Dracula and Zeven following closely behind. Now Naruto you are going to have to flare your chakra as we each take a piece. I'll tell you when we have enough. Naruto nodded his affirmative and put his hands in the ram seal and began to drudge up his chakra. And not a second after he flared his chakra did he feel the drain as Ness in one big bite from the plesiosaur and Zeven in a single swipe, taking all the chakra they needed. He didn't feel any drain from Dracula, and he turned to see him slowly eating and savoring his chakra as he worked up to the amount he needed. Dracula was having a hard time believing this, this kid's chakra tasted amazing, and after the initial drain from Ness and Zeven, he could already feel his reserves replenishing more than he was draining. After a good long minute Dracula managed to find what he was looking for, and as he was removing his fangs from the chakra he flared, he tasted some chakra that seemed familiar, but he couldn't place a finger on it. After savoring the taste for another moment, he let out a content sigh and began to speak, that was the best chakra I've had in a long time, also you pass my portion of the chakra test you have the required yun release affinity. Dracula said causing gasps from the rest of the council, who didn't get to taste Naruto's chakra. He has the required water affinity for my portion. Ness spoke, everyone turned to Zeven awaiting his answer, he has the required earth affinity for my portion, and the bonus wind affinity for Kapala to teach some things to. The others that had none of his chakra really were shook that their new summoner had four affinities, he just had one more test, and he would have completed half the council. Naruto thought for a second if he did the two tests of will and the endurance test, he would only have two more tests, and he would have completed all of them, and the nature connection test sounded relatively easy, and then all he would have would be strength test, and while he knew he was strong, he would wait till he would have proper training from his sensei to do that one after he made Genin. After completing his thoughts, he spoke I would like to do Medusa's and Narmer's tests of will. At this the two mentioned grinned like they just won the lottery. Aside from Frank's strength test they both had the hardest tests. As you wish Naruto. Narmer sat and began to unwrap more of his bandages until he had two feet of them dangling off his wrist and approached Naruto molding his chakra Narmer wrapped Naruto's eyes, nose ears and mouth in bandages, cutting off his senses and pushing chakra to his mind like the Amanakas from Konoha. Narmer was not someone who would get startled easily, but his sore-like mindscape shocked him. Most people didn't even have mindscapes to begin with. So as he wandered the vast sower system that was the representation of Naruto's mind, he was thrown for a loop when he saw a giant cage made out of steel bars and what looked to be a very complex seal in the middle. Cautiously sending a bandage through the bars he was greeted with the sight of a single giant crimson eye with a slit pupil open and narrow at the mummy. It was after a few moments that the beast stepped closer to the light revealing the kickby in all its glory to the mummy, who was slowly retracting the wrappings to himself as the stare-off continued. The giant beast had to be about the size of the actual clan boss, if not a little smaller the mummy thought trying to compare their size while maintaining eye contact. It was surprisingly the kickby to break the silence what are you doing here May? The fox bellowed out its question ended the stare-off. Narma remembering who he is talking to decided to not beat around the bush your container at the fox's nod he continued, is going through the trails to summon those of the monster contract I was sent here to test his will to resist temptations. 
The beast hummed and thought for some and wise the monster clan is the oldest and has more battle experience, and their boss does have the ability to go toe to toe with the ten tails, so all in all not too bad. He decided to get the big question out of the way first, how many trials has he completed he knew all summons, give potential summoners a test, and new group contracts had multiple tests one for each section, so he was surprised when the answer was 3 out of the 8 and that the mummies was number 4, but what came next really shocked the beast. There are two more tests that you should be aware of. The one from Medusa where she will be coming in here as well and Conningra's test involves nature chakra, I just thought it appropriate to let you know. Now if you will excuse me I will begin my test, and with that the mummy disappeared in a swirl of sand leaving the fox to ponder on what it was told. For the fox it was quite the shock, he knew his host was held back, but so far past three of the tests. Even the sage didn't want to go through the test, preferring to study under those damn able toads. So, to hear the kid was still so strong brought a smile to his face, maybe he would be the one his father talked about, he would have to test him when the boy finally came into the seal. Deciding to sleep until this Medusa person showed up, he got as comfortable as he could in his cage and started to dose of thinking of his young host. As Narmer was starting to launch the test his mind wandered elsewhere, thinking back to the fox and wondering if Naruto was aware of him. He would have to tell the others while Medusa was doing her test. As he finished the prep he pulled Naruto into the highly advanced Jinjutsu. Naruto opened his eyes and all he saw around him was desert and not the council chambers. As he started to walk towards the pyramids he got a feeling of dread build up as he drew closer and closer to the pyramids. When he entered the largest pyramid, he saw a truly horrifying sight. There before him was a giant snake at least easily 48 feet long from head to tail scales, pitch black with a crimson red underbelly, with a wide with its neck fanned out to give it a hooded look backing the hokage, Ichirikus, and Aruka into a corner. He could see the faint glimmer of gold to the side, but didn't care because his precious people were in danger and so with a mighty war cry he ran at the snake to drag its attention away from the captives to give them time to get away. As Naruto was courageously facing a Jinjutsu version of a pep. Narmer was talking to the other council members, did you know he was the host of the Kikbi? He asked Dracula. I had a suspicion after the chakra test, but didn't get enough of his chakra to know for certain. Dracula answered casually with a shrug. All the others understood Dracula never made guesses and would make sure before stating something that would cause an uproar, they were still ticked that he neglected to mention that. There was a moment of silence only broken when Narmer started to retract the bandages, cutting off his five senses to make the Jinjutsu more potent. Naruto was panting heavily, the snake proved to be tougher than it looked, he luckily bought enough time for the four to escape, but all his advances proved to be minor irritation to the great beast, that was until the beast disappeared and he was standing in front of the council again. Narmer broke the silence well you passed my test with flying colors kid. That makes four out of the eight of us do you still want to do more trials? Yeah, I want to do Medusa's trial next, but may I ask what that snake was? Naruto begins causing the council to blink, then start howling with laughter. It was when they finally regained their composure ten minutes later that Narmer decided to answer. Kid never let him hear you say that. That was a pep the god of chaos and darkness from the Egyptian's point of view anyways, that's why we laughed at you asking as if he was just some normal snake he is part of my portion of the contract and is very prideful I used him in the Jinjutsu because he is one of the best fighters we have, despite being morally questionable. Naruto paled at that causing more bouts of laughter as he thought if that's true I wonder what the boss of the contract is like. But decided to ask later when Dracula explained things further. Alright hatchling be prepared for my test, it's going to be ten times harder than Narmer's test. Medusa said as she slithered on up to him. Now look into my eyes and he did. When he did he felt himself be pulled to a memory not from him or Medusa, but given by the Kikbi himself, not that he knew that. You see as Medusa was looking for a horrible memory to play to see if fear or sadness would overcome the young summoner she came across the cage that Narmer described and slithered towards it with an intent of actually confirming what the bandaged undead man said. As she approached a crimson eye opened. You must be this Medusa the other may talked about. The Kikbi lightly growled out with a bored tone. Medusa slightly irked had to ask and just what exactly makes us exiles. And I was actually hopping for a bit of help for my test I wanted to test to see if extreme fear or sadness would petrify him. The great beast thought for a moment and then thought of the consequences of doing this gaining the biggest fox-like grin he could. Could you use one of my memories? He asked. I could if I had some of your chakra. I could play your memory for the boy. Medusa said with a shrug and started to slither towards the cage taking the paw and taking the bare minimum of the chakra required. In the outside world this took all but two seconds. In Naruto he just sat and watched a memory not believing what he just saw. The kickbee was sealed in him and he looked to be the son of the fourth hokage and some red-haired women that could shoot chains out of her body. It was just too much to see the kickbee attack from another perspective. 
Now seeing two sides of it, he now saw why the village resented him, though he couldn't see the logic in it he understood. Though he would still give the Hokage a hard time about all of this, he didn't blame the man. As he was standing there rearranging his life's goals the council was chit-chatting amongst themselves it lasted all of three minutes when Naruto spoke next whose trail am I doing now? Well the only trail you could do as of this moment is my nature test. Your body is not yet ready to face the endurance or strength trails. Koninger spoke with a gravely voice while waving his hand in a come here motion. When Naruto was in front of the giant troll he noticed his crown was in his hand instead of on his head, he was curious, but chose to instead focus on the troll as he spoke with further instructions. We of the monster clan have three types of sage mode for the three types of beasts. My test is to see which of the nature chakras you are compatible with. The rock troll explained as he laid his hand on Naruto's shoulder and channeled a little bit of nature chakra into the boy, and the result came as a shock to all the council members. Naruto first shrank into a miniature kickby, then he reverted almost normal, but kept a fox-like muzzle, ears and eyes of a fox, and nine fox tails behind him, then he fully returned to human form, but at what looked to be six rings spread around the outside of his face, with what looked to be enough room for two more on the outside. Each of the rings was a different color, the first ring was black, with a thin lining of red on the inside like Dracula's cloak, the second looking like one of Medusa's snakes with the same color pattern as her bottom half, the third had the same faded yellow with a greenish gray on the inside, the fourth having a scale-like pattern with a sea green color, the fifth ring was an albino white ring that gave of the appearance of fur, the last ring was a stone gray with a brown wooden bark color lining the inside of the ring. With that Koninger hit Naruto in the back with the crown and stared in shock that he was able to access all three types of nature, chakra the monster clan had access to. The council was snapped out of their shock as Naruto collapsed unconsciously onto the stone floor. Well I'll send him back when he is awake and have him summon us to talk to the leader of his village, so that way we can explain it to him and the leader at the same time. Dracula stated as he swooped down picked up the boy and started to leave, but not without a few last words, I would tell the people that you represent that he did indeed pass all but two trails that should earn the respect of most of the others. Naruto woke up with a groan as he slowly got up through the fatigue his muscles were feeling. Noticing that he was back in the room he started in except this time there was a dresser with a note on top of it. Shuffling to the note he picked it up and started reading Naruto, there are clothes in the dresser below that should fit you. We took your measurements when you first arrived, and I had our clan's tailor make it for you. The other door leads to a bathroom, and we added a clock I'll come check in on you around 10, until then relax in your room, take a shower and change, just don't leave your room, yet most still doesn't know about you being our summoner yet, so it is most prudent you don't leave. Naruto took a glance at the clock and noticed it was about 9.15, deciding to take Drax's advice and take a shower, he collected the new cloths and headed into the bathroom. By the time he got done taking a shower, drying off, and getting dressed in his new cloths the clock read that it was 9.45. So with a little time to kill he decided to enjoy his new look in the mirror that appeared during his shower. Standing there with a black ninja pants with a dark green emerald stripe on his left leg and a sea green stripe on his right leg, leading to a twin pair of crimson wooden sandals. With an albino fur utility belt that was currently empty holding the pants up. He also had on a red-orange shirt that had a bone-white swirl in the middle of the chest like those on the flak jackets. The top at all of he had a stone-gray battle cloak with two eyes on the hood, the right eye being a pale yellow, while the left looked to be closed, showing a scaled eyelid with four claw slashes over it that looked to have scared a long time ago. Down in the middle of the back of the cloak had a partial circle that had six smaller circles each of the rings was a different color, the first ring was black, with a thin lining of red on the inside like Dracula's cloak, the second looking like one of Medusa's snakes, with the same color pattern as her bottom half, the third had the same faded yellow with a greenish gray on the inside, the fourth having a scale-like pattern with a sea green color, the fifth ring was an albino white ring that gave of the appearance of fur, the last ring was a stone gray with a brown wooden bark color lining the inside of the ring. A and it is his human sage mode he didn't see it though because it was on his face. As he finished looking over his new cloths the clock chimed alerting him that it was 10 o'clock and not a moment after did Dracula come striding in pleased to see Naruto changed out of his old orange garb and into his new cloths. Dracula made another follow him motion and started his way to the dinging room of the castle while making sure he still had the contract scroll up his sleeve. Approaching the dinning hall was nerve wracking for the duo. Dracula because he didn't know who all heard about their new summoner. While well, Naruto didn't know if all the beasts on the other side of the doors would be willing to accept him as a summoner, because he hadn't passed all the trails still having two left. As the doors parted open he saw a massive open-air dining hall with a long table on the other side, with the clan's council at it, except Dracula of course, and tables to the left and right as far as the eye could see. The sound of fast-moving wind hit his ear when he looked up to see gargoyles, dragons, and so many others he couldn't identify at the speed they were traveling. 
A loud chakra enhanced cough caught his attention and the attention of the diners, and in a booming voice Dracula broke the news. For those of you unaware we gained a summoner earlier today, who has managed to pass six of the eight trails the council came up with despite not having much proper training, Dracula paused to let that sink in before he dropped the biggest news of all. And at Coningra's test he was found compatible to all three sage modes. You could hear a pen drop at the silence that ensued to that tidbit. And with that Dracula with a dramatic showing whipped out the contract scroll. Getting a cough show off from Medusa and chuckles from the other members of the council. Dracula brought the scroll down and said sing your name and blood in the box and stamp your fingerprints in your dominant hand. After signing the scroll Drac sent him back to training ground 2 with a message to summon him in one hour after they talked to the rest of the summons to see who wants him to take the last two tests before being summonable or something like that. So, there he sat waiting for an hour thinking of how weird the last two days have been. He still didn't know what happened to get to the monster's realm. He was starting to try and remember what the teacher said about summons, but was drawing a blank maybe he should have paid attention. Oh well it all worked out so who cares he'll totally pay attention the next time he goes to the academy. Looking at the sun and noticing about an hour has passed he goes ahead and does the jutsu board dog bird minky ram, he bit his thumb and shouted summoning jutsu thinking of Dracula as he poured chakra into the technique. A poof of smoke later and there stood Drac in all his vampire glory. Whoa kid. We need to teach you some chakra control stat. He used enough chakra to summon a pep, kapala, neon, and s, while also giving them a decent amount of chakra each still. He said to the tired and panting Naruto, but all the academy teachers tell me I am not putting enough chakra into the clone jutsu, so I thought I would need to use as much as I could muster. The blonde said with clear visible frustration. Dracula frowned at that, but filed it away with a mental sigh, we can worry about that ladder in your training, for now let's go see your hokage Drac said. As they walked through the town Drac deciding to go into bat form and rest in the blonde shaggy head, noticed the glares, and immediately wondered if this had to deal with the biju sealed in him, and decided to ask this to the hokage. As they approached the hokage building the sun was just rising over the wall, poking at the inky blackness of the night, with the joys and promises the day brings. As the blonde walked up the stairs the bat noticed more glares, but caught the warm worried smile of the secretary towards the blonde, while the curious and distrustful look towards the bat-shaped vampire. After getting a nod that the hokage was in and not in a meeting Naruto walked in with a little stressed Dracula nuzzling in his hair for comfort. The hokage said it was Sunday, and they had yet to find Naruto in the summon realm and Ma had yet to report if the next few clans had seen the little rapscallion, but he was starting to get impatient. Just as he was about to summon Enma for a progress report the subject of his distress walked right in and plopped down on the chair opposite of him in the office with a little bat on his head. Now that couldn't be right they checked the bat clan yesterday. It was when the bat spoke that he realized it wasn't from the bat clan. Make the masked guards go and summon the current monkey king. It said with an authoritative and ancient voice. He did as asked and signaled the guards out and summoned Enma who was startled by the bat. What is one of his kind doing here? Enma howled with rage, spitting out the words his kind. This was a shock for the aged Hokage he had never seen Enma this angry not even towards his wayward student who only got a reaction of displeasure when he is named. I will only speak when that last man in the vents is gone and a barrier is put up to cancel this delicate conversation the bat answered, showing no reaction to the monkey's words. Before any more could be said Enma disappeared and reappeared with a rude Anbu unit dead in his hands. Here is and put up the barrier he owes answers. Enma snarled out. Do you want me to get Kakashi and Guy in here because they have summons too? The aged man replied. Dracula hummed and thought only if we have a barrier to block sight and sound in a big area with a lake. The bad man responded drawing eye out of the monkey who held his tongue, knowing that the dog and tortoise clans would also want answers. Hirazan nodded already moving to the ideal place and sending out two messenger monkeys to the two ninjas with the message of Naruto, summons, Hokage Lake. Ten minutes later Hokage Lake, a group of four came to the side of three men near the lake, two Kanoha ninjas and a ninja with the kanji for oil on his headband. These were Jiraiya, Kakashi, and Guy the only one to surprise everybody was Jiraiya because even the Hokage didn't know he was back to the village yet. As they got towards the center Drac, still in bat form, talked to the Hokage. Put the barrier up, then summon a member of your summoned clan that you trust with your life, it doesn't have to be the boss of the clan. He said directing the last part towards the other three. Here is and put the barrier up like asked, though with some reluctance with being bossed around, and turned to see the Pakan and Ningam from both Kakashi and Guy respectively, but was shocked to find Fukasaku and Shima with Jiraiya. Now if you can get a chakra pill ready we'll begin after Naruto summons the rest of the council. Drac said whispering encouraging words to Naruto after feeling the boy's distress. So as a repeat he did the steps again. Board dog bird monkey ram, he bit his thumb and shouted summoning jutsu, imagining the rest of the council as he poured all the chakra he could spare. 
and in seven plums of smoke the council appeared though without any water to hide the height difference, he could see that Ness was a shocking 49 feet long from the tip of his tail, to his head with the neck being 10 feet long, a 5 foot tail, leaving his body 34 feet long, and looked to be as tall and thick as a train from snow country. After all the summons and humans got comfortable, as comfortable as the other summons could be with that clan on the other side of the field. It was when Dracula decided enough was enough and turned back into his human form that broke the thick atmosphere. I know we are not well liked by the other summons, but don't hold that against us, the little ones should have paid more attention to the boundary rules set up around the time of the nine-tailed beast's creation. He broke the silence with a sigh and a logical defense for their clan's honor. This was apparently the wrong thing to say as Shima protested before Enma could blow up from rage. Aside from Gamamara no one else remembers the terms set up by the summons of that time, so we could not particularly enforce or spread them like you would think. But the side Dracula was about to speak when surprisingly it was Conningra who spoke up the rule set state that any summon who leaves their borders are able to be hunted by any other summon who would care to, but only in the designated neutral zones, so all the young ones were free game when the hunting party stumbled upon them. He stated looking Enma straight in the eyes daring to break the rule, since the elemental continent was considered neutral territory. After the summons digested that information it was Kakashi who spoke next. What exactly is your contract? I thought it was the bat at first, but I was clearly wrong. Waving his gloved hand towards the entire council. We are the monster contract a contract that was made before even the toad contract we are even older than the tailed beasts. Dracula said stepping back to let someone else take his place. Before the integration of Chakra before even this continent there was a world that thrived with technology more advanced than yours, that had the power to wide out something the size of the elemental nations in a matter of seconds. Medusa spoke. But they misused this power, and during the fallout of World War III, we got created by the aftereffects of their weapons. Ness said. But we were hunted, so we self-exiled ourselves to an island having little contact with the world till after World War IV, which wiped almost all human life off the planet, except for on this island. Zeven said picking at his teeth with a claw. So we took over what used to be known as America, but then other animals started to mutate and make clans, so we called a meeting with these clans to discuss borders, and after many debates, we came up with the current clan borders. Frank stated. Then Kagaya went and ate the sacred fruit from the world tree that was here on the island and gained the ability to use chakra. She later gave birth to twin boys. Hagoromo and Hamura also known as the Sage of the Six Paths and his lesser known brother, respectively. Sato stated boredly. Skip about 20 years Kagaya was afraid that her sons were going to overthrow her and release the captives at the recuperating tree, so she meld with the tree and transformed into the first tailed beast, the ten tails to recoup her chakra she passed to her children. Narmer said re-wrapping his bandages for the tenth time since he's been summoned. But the sage and his brother defeated the ten tails with the help of the boss summon from our clan and sealed her way into the sage, making him the first inch cricky. He later split the ten tails into the other nine tailed beasts, giving each of them a conscience and will of their own. Conninger finished for the group. The humans and the summons were in shock. That was huge news to digest, but it was the Saratobi who recovered first. And where exactly is the boss summon? Starting what was sure to be a long line of questions. He's sleeping recuperating the energy he lost in the fight with Ijkbai no Akumi Asagi, who might I mention is stronger than all of the other nine tailed beasts combined. Dracula stated. After a lot more questions all being answered by the council it was time to go. Hey kid, you passed my trail summoning all of us is a tough task, so you definitely have good endurance. Sato said before she too poofed back home. It had been two years since he got the monster contract. And he couldn't have been any happier having everyone from the contract training him for those two years straight. He was just happy here as and decided to let him train with the summons, instead of forcing him to go to the academy like everyone else. The only thing more exciting that that was when he got the shadow clone jutsu. Flashback no jutsu. Hey Hiruzen, why can't Naruto do the clone jutsu? Medusa asked while she watched Naruto try and fail to walk up the tree while balancing three leaves on his body. Well is he putting enough chakra into the jutsu? The Hokage asked taking a puff on his pipe. Well I would sure hope so even with almost half a year of nothing but chakra control training, he still put way too much chakra into the summoning technique. He put enough chakra to summon me, the Siren Sisters, Cerberus, Basil, and a handful of gargoyles, if he wasn't thinking of me and me alone. She yelled with frustration in her voice, her hair of snakes waving in the air as a sing of frustration. The Saratobi hummed maybe he needs a more chakra taxing technique, and I think I know the perfect jutsu. He said vanishing in the direction of the Hokage Tower to find the scroll of seals. A few minutes later he came back with a scroll as big as Naruto's back. He unfurled it to show just the first jutsu. Naruto come here I think I got a clone jutsu substitute fit for someone with your chakra capacity. He said waving the boy over to him. 
After two hours of practice he got the theory enough to try with chakra so with a cross-shaped hand seal and a shout of shadow clone jutsu. The clearing was filled with 3000 clones. Both the Hokage and Medusa fainted out of pure shock. Flashback no Jutsu Kai. After that and learning about their memory transfer effect used it to study all types of histories both the shinobi world and the past world. Though his favorite thing to study and read were the mythology of the past world. Reading about all the different monsters of the contract and after studying one, he would summon the corresponding being from the contract to see what of the myths correspond with their actual ability. He did ask to use them in training his abilities and other skills, the council only permitted him to read history or other things that would be useful to his career for the rest of that year. But still making little progress in chakra control finally relented to speed up the process. It took them six months with 2000 shadow clones to finally get a good amount of control of his chakra under control, still not enough to use a good portion of the jutsu they wanted to teach him, but oh well. But the last six months till graduation were spent learning things that would help on missions such as hunting, proper curing of meats and water, recognizing jinjutsu, and five non-elemental jutsu. While clones study history, politics, laws of the different nations, and negotiation tactics, as well as doing chakra control sometimes at the same time. But now was not the time for any more reminiscing about the past two years of training. Now was the time he would pass this graduation exam to become a genin. Frank also said that he would be allowed to take his test a month or so after his graduation exam. The writing test, it only asking questions about shinobi history and a few mathematical problems. Studying history and other aspects like mathematics and chemistry to economics and meteorology made that test a cinch. Throwing test was pitiful, only needing 5 out of 10 to pass that session, but he never spent much time on throwing weapons, mostly because most of the summons don't use range, only getting a 6 out of 10 with shuriken and a 7 out of 10 with kunai. The jutsu was boring he did the academy basic style against Aruka, as he was reserving to not show the monster's tiding fist till he got his team. Then came the three jutsu test he passed a body switch replacing with Mizuki much to his ire, he transformed into a small apep, giving the Chunin heart attacks when they could actually interact with the transformation and that it was a giant snake, then came the damnable clone jutsu. He did ask if shadow clones would be allowed, and he got this as his response, the test states that the student be able to make three operable clones using the clone jutsu, and if they couldn't, they will be failed and put in a remedial course. Said Mizuki. Well I can't use that pathetic excuse for a jutsu at such low a level so why can't I use a better improved version Naruto countered. Both arguing on and on for what felt like at least an hour over legal terms and stipulations around the graduation requirements that just flew over Iruka's head. In the end Mizuki won and made Naruto do the normal clone. With a humph Naruto did the hand seals and called as little of a chakra amount as he cold clone jutsu. Well he made clones, three paper white clones that looked to almost be falling over a major improvement since the last time, but not enough to pass. So, there he was sitting on the swing mopping trying to figure out how to tell the council this, or more specifically, how to tell them this without them wanting to reduce the academy into ruble. That was until Mizuki came up and said look I respect your knowledge of the laws of Kanaha. So just for that I want to tell you of another way you can pass. Hook. Not even the fourth Hokage could pass this test when he was a kid. He continued. Line. Plus I'll see if I can't get permission to tell you why you are disliked by the village. He stated looking right into his eyes. Sinker. Steal the scroll of seals from the Hokage's library. Then take it to this shack in training ground 23 and learn a jutsu from it. All right now he knows how to break this to the council. But that he went to a secluded training ground that he found that has a good sized lake. One summoning jutsu later and the council stands before him getting better, but you're still using too much. Now did you pass? Dracula said before getting straight to business. No all because I couldn't make three normal clones. But I was offered a test that would still allow me to pass. Naruto asked. Oh, and that would be? Dracula gave a stare barely restraining his anger towards the academy for failing him for that simple of a jutsu. Mizuki approached me about a test I haven't heard about. It's where I take the forbidden scroll and learn one jutsu from it. He also said he'll see if he can get permission to tell me why I am disliked by the village. Isn't that great? I would consult the Hokage and see what he recommends. Drac why don't you go with him we'll go back and let the rest know they might be summoned. Medusa said poofing back after her piece said followed by everyone else from the council except Dracula. The dynamic duo made their way to the Hokage office and got ready for a long meeting. So what do I owe the pleasure? The Hokage asked still looking down at his paperwork. Naruto failed the graduation test. Dracula grumbled out towards the Hokage instantly grabbing the Hokage's attention. Report. He spoke in what was dubbed as his Hokage voice by the ninja of the village. After having a legal argument with Chunin instructor Mizuki I was told to use the normal clone jutsu, which as you know doesn't work for me. 
Then after the academy let out I was approached by Mizuki who told me of a way to pass by breaking in and stealing the forbidden scroll and taking it to training ground 23. He also stated that he would tell me why I am hated by the village. He stated in one breath taking in a few gasps of air before returning to silence. Hiruzen took this information in stride so Mizuki is a traitor, but what would you recommend we do? He asked wanting to know the blonde's input. Well why not give me a different scroll and put an advanced Jinjutsu on it too advanced for him to detect or break. Then either a squad of summons or a squad of Anbu capture him as he arrives on scene. Hiruzen was impressed that he came up with a good strategy in such a short time. Dracula what team of summons would you suggest to do this capture? I would recommend a Kelpie, the Siren Sisters, and the Obsidian Gargoyles. The vampire spoke. Obsidian? Hiruzen asked. The Sirens to draw his attention and get him in a spot where the Gargoyles can get him to the Kelpie, which would take a cage amount of chakra to break its hold. There are different teams of Gargoyles the Obsidian happen to have a great amount of pain tolerance and are the second fastest team of Gargoyles. Dracula explained as Naruto took notes for future strategies. I say Naruto uses those summons, they have a higher chance than an Anbu team of four, plus I bet they would love some action. The Hokage stated with a chuckle as for the scroll I have one that might help with your chakra control issue. Tell me what have either of you heard about the inner gates? He questioned. Naruto's eyes shot open as he recalled and recited what the books would say. The inner gates are able to turn an average Joe Schmo into someone as strong as a cage for a limited time, if all eight are open by allowing the body access to the chakra it usually restricts naturally. But how does this help with my control? The blonde knucklehead finished with a tilt of the head. What would happen if you opened the first two gates, then worked on solely chakra exercises? Here is in question. It was Dracula that figured it out first. He would be able to control his chakra better at a higher percentage of chakra than when the gates were shut he could control the much more limited chakra with a finer point so to speak. Correct this is the way my female student Tsunade gained her perfect control for her medical jutsu. Hiruzen said while taking a mental picture of Naruto's gaping face at the implications. So the scroll I am going to give you will tell you how to unlock the first two gates, it would also be a good idea to go through your tojutsu style with it because it also augments the speed and strength. After ironing out the final details Naruto heads to the training ground with Dracula to set their trap and start training. With the blood seals and a shout of summoning jutsu. A sea green haired horse appeared standing next to three human women, one with blonde hair, one with pitch black, and the last one having red, that were each a form of beauty and five pitch black gargoyles standing eight foot high, each with folded wings, that looked like they would be ten feet across from tip to tip if fully stretched out. Still to much chakra Naruto the blonde siren said. Hanging his head he asked the other blonde by how much, Agalop. Not as much as normal you still had enough to summon Cerberus and Basil, but you're doing better. Agalop said with a giggle at his dejected face, followed shortly by her two sisters Thelxiepia, the Redeed, and Pisano. The black-haired one. After Naruto picks himself up out of his sadness at overloading the technique again we can get down to business. We are setting up a trap for a traitor who sabotaged Naruto's test, making him fail if we pull this off he passes with the marks he should have been given. Dracula stated in a commanding voice that made you know why he had a seat on the council. We devised that we'll distract him long enough for the sirens to start up their song giving the gargoyles enough time to grab him and put him on Coco and restrain his hands tight, the pseudo-boss stated getting a nod of approval from the members present, except for Naruto who was a part of making this plan. Mizuki was starting to get worried. He hasn't got news that the demon brat stole the scroll, so he was going to check the meetup location first, then the brat's apartment to make sure he would actually go through with the plan. Imagine his surprise when he stumbled on the brat with a well-dressed pale dude, both looking at the scroll he assigned him to take. The pale guy wouldn't be a problem, he would just kill them both and get his reward from Orochimaru. But, just as he made his presence known and them both look up at him, did he hear women singing. He didn't know why, but he was drawn to the singing. After tree hopping a couple of trees over and unknowingly on the exact spot he needed to be for the trap, did he see three bombshells of women. He knew that if he brought Orochimaru these girls he would get even more rewards maybe even one of the girls themselves. Just as Mizuki was about to start talking the blonde began to play with her hair a little giving the agreed upon signal for the gargoyles to do their part. Just like that the white-headed Chunin was trapped. The gargoyles pining him stomach up to the back of the horse with his hands and feet getting pinned to the side of the horse, not able to bring them together to do any hand seals. With him captured they went to report their success to the Hokage. With Coco and the Obsidian Battalion delivering him to T and I, and the Siren Sisters disappearing in a poof of smoke, letting the blonde know they'll have his amber earplugs ready next time, so he wouldn't have to rely on other summons to make sure he doesn't fall under the same ninjutsu as their victims do. Leaving Naruto, Dracula, and Hiruzen alone in the office to discuss the happenings and after effect of what will later be referred to as the scroll incident. Report Hiruzen said looking into Naruto's eyes. 
We spent the hour and a half between when we set up the trap to work on me getting the first two gates to open a command. Progress with that is I can open both for about 30 minutes. The trap worked flawlessly and succeeded in bringing Chunin trader Mizuki into custody. The blonde stated in a professional manner. Anything else to add Dracula now's the time. Hiruzen said turning to the room's third occupant. Dealing with this no. On other personal matters yes. Dracula said giving the aged Hokage a look asking if they were done talking about the capture. But the nod from the leader the vampire started again, after Naruto gets his team the council formally requests that his gen and team, their sensei, and you join us for a celebration feast. Dracula stated with a tone of nervousness at the Hokage rejecting and him having to deal with a rowdy clan. That's up to his gen and teammates and his squad sensei. I personally am humbled to join you and your clansmen for diner. Speaking of teams. Naruto interrupted who's going to be on mine and when is our first meeting. He asked excitedly. You will find that out in two days I have a meeting tomorrow to plan the teams and then you meet the day after. Hiruzen states with a chuckle. Say Naruto would you mind summoning Dracula here tomorrow so he can sit in on the meeting just so if you're placed with clan members they can make amends with their respective summons. The Hokage asked after a few moments of silence. It's not our fault everyone forgot the contract made some thousands of years ago. Dracula stated getting upset that everyone forgot important history. I know but this would be a step forward to improving your relations with the other clans and will make teamwork in between Naruto and any potential teammates better. Hiruzen said almost revealing who he wants to have as his teammates. Hi and I'll come to the meeting Dracula said seeing the logic don't think you get the day off I want you to try and figure out who logically would be put in a team together and give me your reasons after the meeting tomorrow. He said rounding on Naruto. With that they wrapped up their conversation to let Naruto rest before summoning Dracula again before the team selection meeting. The next day. After waking up just as the sun was rising, Naruto summoned Dracula after his normal morning routine. You know you might have to start getting up earlier if your team meets early in the morning. Dracula stated taking a sip from the canteen he brought and sighing in content. Yeah well if I start getting up earlier you might miss your all important beauty rest Naruto shot back finishing cooking up the eggs he was making for himself. Yeah well you won't have as many training days when you have to do missions all the time, so if you want training from the clan, you'll either have to stay up later or wake up earlier. Dracula said polishing off his canteen and sending it back to the summoning realm. Looking at the clock on the wall Dracula stood up I am going to head to the meeting room a little early, I'll find you after it's done. I would suggest summoning Frank and tell him I think you are ready for his strength trail now. However, if you do this you may have to use the power given to you by the two inner gates, just remember the effects it may have on your body. Not that it matters the little brat has the natural regeneration of some of the higher ups in the clan. Were his finishing thoughts as he flew away in his small bat form. Who are we missing here isn't? Everyone's here even Kakashi. Kurinai asked he is almost here just about block away here is and said, sensing the bat form of Dracula just about to get there. Sorry if I am late the little rascal and I needed to have a conversation about future training after he gets placed in his team. Dracula stated landing on Kakashi's hair and making a comfy resting place out of it. This here is Dracula one of the summons from the students his clan has the ire of several other clans, so he came to apologize to his summoner's teammate summons. Now the teams are as follows here is in making it known for the Jonin's present as to why the small bat was here and kicking off the meeting before anyone could object. Well this is a surprise where the first words out of Frank's mouth as the smoke dispersed from the summoning jutsu. Dracula said he thinks I am ready for the strength test. Naruto said as he was stretching to prepare for this test. And where is that bothersome bat? He is in a meeting to decide what teams are going to be put together. Ramps asked if he could come to make amends with summons if I get clan kids as my teammates. Naruto said finishing his stretches and Frank's next question. Alright so the strength test you're going to have to summon team restraints. Frank started who? Naruto interrupted. They have the most strength comparable to mine of the zombies, the goal of the test is to break out of the team and then do an arm wrestle with me immediately after. Frank finished okay, if you say so. Naruto finished by biting his thumb again and going through the hand signs. Summoning Jutsu. And there they were four small grey zombies going about halfway up his calf, two that were about six foot tall and grey as well, the last guy was a ginormous twelve foot tall. What's going on Frank? The shortest of the four smallest ones asked. Naruto is going to take my test, and while normally I would restrain him and then arm wrestle him, I thought it would be better if you guys restrained him. Frank said with a knowing wink. Alright kid hope you're ready for this. My name's Punter by the way I am the only zombie who can speak on team restraints the others all lost their tongues decades ago. Punter said flashing a yellow tooth grin. Nice to meet you Punter. And I am ready. Naruto said with all his enthusiasm. And in the blink of an eye the four smallest zombies latched onto both his ankles and hands, seeming to weigh about the Hokage Tower. 
the two medium's armies appeared one in front and one behind him, pinning his arms to his side and restricting any other movement he had side to side, effectively locking him in. The most curious thing was the big guy who managed to hold him on his shoulders, preventing his escape route of up. We wouldn't normally have this much strength, but we are the only team that gets stronger the more chakra you use it causes us to gain extra weight, and the other three extra grip strength not even Frank has this unless he's summoned with only hybrid nature chakra. Hunter started talking from his left hand. Well that's good to know for when I am in the field. But there is one thing that Frank didn't know before I summoned you guys. Naruto grunted out. And what wasn't I aware of Naruto? Frank asked from his seated position on a stump that had been a tree just a few minutes ago. I learned how to unlock two of the inner gates last night. Naruto exclaimed throwing open the two gates. The big guy and the two mediums were pushed back by the sudden opening of the two gates, and that was all the time Naruto needed. Swinging his two arms back and forth, he crouched down and hit the two smalls around his ankles, with the two around his wrists, knocking both sets off and effectively freeing him. Frank looked on in pure shock that he managed to break out of the team, because he was feeling how much extra chakra he was feeding into the jutsu, he had enough to make the smalls way about like the Hokage Tower and give the bigger three the strength off Elite Jonin. Did you charge all the extra chakra into your muscles when you opened the gates? That's the only way I could see you shaking off the four smalls. Frank asked elaborating his thoughts. Yeah that was the only way me and Dracula saw me passing your strength test. Naruto stated. Well if you can use the first two gates, I'd say your strength is plenty enough to pass my test. So, if you want to close them now and I'll tell the clan. Do you want me to take your cloak back before your graduation dinner? Frank asked. That would be lovely Frank. Also can you tell the clan we'll be having three summoned bosses over Enma, Carla, and Kamadao. Dracula said before poofing out along with everyone else leaving Naruto to train by himself for the rest of the afternoon. Here they were all the people who passed the graduation exam and were about to be assigned a team. Most were you average civilian kid who thought they could make it to fame by becoming a ninja. But there are eight among them that showed fountains of potential, these people were Sasuke Chiha, Sakura Hiruno, Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, Choji Akamichi, Hinata Hayuga, Kiba Inuzuka, and Shino Aburam. All canon outfits and skills so far, there is one that shows more potential than the rest, and that is Naruto Uzumaki, dressed in a white fur shirt with yellow bandages around his arms and legs, and seaweed green scale shorts going down to the knees, the current and only holder of the monster summoning contract. As he was waiting for the teacher arrived he was still pondering on who his team may be, and if they won't like him for his summon contract. Before his thoughts could get any farther the door opened and then walked Aruka the head teacher for the class he was in and was supposed to be in before discovering the contract. All right class settle down and I'll call out the teams. No reaction from most of the students to busy chatting in their friend groups to pay this card instructor any mind. Sit down and listen up you brats Aruka stated with a tick mark for being ignored and with his head about 10 times bigger. Right, team 1. Naruto ignored the cheers of all the civilians who did get on the team they wanted Team 7 Sasuke Chiha, Sakura Hirono, and Choji Akimichi. Team 8 Hinata Hayuga, Ino Yamanaka, Kiba Inuzuka. Team 9 is still in circulation from last year, making the last team, Team 10 with Naruto Uzumaki, Shikamaru Nara and Shino Aburam. It's been fun teaching you all, and I wish you all the best of luck. Your instructors should arrive in about an hour. Hiruka said giving them their final dismissal. Shino walked down to Naruto's row and then both proceeded to go collect their third teammate without a word. Outside under a tree near the sparing rings, you could find the three new teammates getting to know each other. So, why do you guys think we got put into a team together? Naruto started off breaking the semi-awkward silence that came after escaping the classroom for lunch. After taking a bite out of his bento box, Shikamaru gave his reasoning well from what I know of Shino and his clansmen, they are typically long-range fighters with tracking skills, so my assumption is that is his role on this team. After a nod from Shino, he continued my clan usually are mid-range fighters with more of a tactical mindset. That would mean you are more than likely plugged in for being our close-range fighter with a different role, depending on who our sensei is. Shikamaru said as he finished his lunch and prepared to go back to wait for their sensei. They didn't have to wait long soon after lunch, and most of the civilian kids being shuffled out by nondescript jonin, leaving just the nine teens when two more jonin walked in. One was a lady in a white with red trim ribbon dress and a red arm covering on her right arm. Teammate follow me. She said before spinning on her heel and walking right back out the door. The other one to enter was a man with black spiky hair connected to a full but well-trimmed beard in the standard jonin attire, except for the two trench blades at his hip and the purple sash around his waist with the kanji for 12 on it. Team 10 follow me. The man said popping a cigarette in his mouth and turning to leave now that he had collected his team. After about 10 minutes of walking to the training grounds area they arrived at their designated training ground. 
It wasn't much there was a small, shallow, and calm flowing stream running through the middle of the training ground, leading to a pond you could barely make out in the distance. A couple of practice dummies and a circle of flat rocks to offer a place to sit and with trees making up a majority of the scenery around the edge of the clearing. Alrighty tell us a little about yourselves likes dislikes and the sort. Said Asuma after lighting the cigarette and sitting on one of the stones and motioning for them to do the same. Well, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, my likes are my summons and training, and my dislikes are traitors and people who can't tell the difference between a kunai and a scroll. Naruto stated after a brief pause of silence. My name is Shikamaru Nara, my likes are my clan members, and tending to the family dear, my dislike is anything I deem troublesome. Shikamaru said realizing it was his turn next. My name is Shino Aburam, my likes are my clan and insects, my dislikes are pesticides and people who kill insects for no reason. Shino stated with a low buzzing sound coming off him at the mention of his dislikes. Right well my name is Asuma Siratobi, my likes are my fellow Jonins and my clan, my dislikes are elders who can't let go of the past and perverts. Asuma said before continuing. So, this team as with all other teams made this year are supposed to be well-rounded, so we have Shino for tracking and wearing down the enemy, Shikamaru to capture and hold the enemy, and Naruto who will be our jack of all trades, so I'm told because of his summons. He breaks to take a drag of his cigarette, so your task to officially become Genin is simple. You have three options you can track down and capture Kakashi to find and burn his stash of books, replace the Hokage's stash of tobacco with these mushrooms, or find and get Kurinai to tell you her crush's name. After a bit of discussion Naruto speaks up, we chose to replace the stash of tobacco with the mushrooms. At this Asuma quirks an eyebrow, but nods nonetheless and gives the kids the bag to replace with the tobacco. Find me after you're done where his last words as he vanished unknowingly to the genin to follow them and see how this takes place. As the newly grads are left alone they start discussing on how to accomplish this task they have been given. So, what is the plan? Naruto asks. I believe our best bet would be to have you and me as a distraction as she knows bugs exchange what our objective is. Shikamaru states as he holds his hands in an upside down semicircle. Seeing a nod from both of his teammates, they make way to the tower discussing different plans to distract the aging cage. As they walk into the office, all except Shino who is using a female bug he planted on Naruto to guide his insects through the ventilation shafts with the bag of mushrooms, hey old man you haven't forgotten about the dinner tonight I hope. Naruto asks in a sickly sweet voice making the Hokage sweat and gulp nervously. Of course not, and I have already had a long talk with Enma to be on his utmost best behavior tonight. He chuckles out. That's great to hear because you know how they would have reacted if you were a no-show to the dinner. At this he remembers something turning to Shikamaru he remembers to ask hey, would you and your family like to come to diner tonight as well? You could even bring you summon over. Naruto asks then exclaims. Yeah I'll have to ask my parents though the fact you know of the Nara clan's connection to the deer contract is remarkable, considering no one really summons them anymore. Shikamaru states. Just as he was about to retort Shino walks and followed by Asuma. Sorry I was just in the restroom. Also, yes I would have to talk to my parents as well for the dinner party. Shino says that's cool how you can talk to insects. Did you have some on me to hear about the dinner invite? Naruto asks yes, as to why I planted a bug on you, is because I haven't been in the Hokage tower much and didn't want to get lost, is all Shino said, answering the Hokage's question before he asked it. Are you going to invite the insect summons? And are you going Asuma-sensei? Wouldn't miss it for the world kid Asuma responds. Turning to Shino and getting a nod in confirmation, they all leave the Hokage's office with Asuma using hand seals behind his back to tell his dad not to smoke till he comes back. Back at the training field Asuma tells them to report. We broke off into two teams Team A, which served as a distraction, so Team 2 could slip the bag of mushrooms in place of the normal tobacco. Naruto started. Then after which Team A consisting of Naruto and I went into the Hokage's office to pose a situation that would demand most of his attention drawing them from the surrounding to us. Shikamaru continued. Then using the female beetle I planted on Naruto during our walk there I brought the mushrooms using my beetles to the desk and swapped out the tobacco for it. Once that was done I went to go in and you followed behind me. Shino finished. Asuma was pleased oh was his team going to do wonders. Well, to start off you passed the tests were designed to test teamwork because only when you worked together did you actually accomplish the mission. Now what time is the dinner Naruto? Asuma stated then asked. They said to meet at the Hokage Tower at 7.30 p.m. Naruto replied having to think back on the time Dracula gave him. So, you're all dismissed until then. Now I have to go report to the Hokage about you passing your exam, so may I have his tobacco back please. He said then stuck his hand out to Shino to retrieve the tobacco. After saying their goodbyes and parting for now Asuma sped off to the Hokage Tower to report on his team. Not 10 minutes went by before he was kneeling before his dad waiting to give his report. 
How did they do Asuma, and why did you tell me not to smoke until you come back? Hiruzen asked. Well, I gave them three options for their teamwork test, one was to capture Kakashi and find then burn his book stash that caused a shiver to go down the cage's back second was to find Kurinai and find out a crush, causing a sweat drop to go down the cage's head at the blatant crush his son had, and lastly the one they picked was to replace your tobacco with mushrooms. At that the old cage looked in his drawer to find the bag of shrooms and was really glad he followed his son's advice to not smoke until he came back. And how did they exactly do this? Hiruzen asked as he gave the mushrooms back in exchange for his tobacco well, they had Shino exchange it while you were distracted with Naruto. Asuma said as he made a mental note to give the mushrooms back to the hospital before the dinner. Later that night 10 minutes before the appointed time everyone invited to the diner was standing outside the tower. All except Naruto who was going to arrive in an extravagant fashion. Just as the clock hit 7.30 there was a poof of smoke followed by two bats doing circles around him starting at his feet until they vanished in poofs of smoke after passing his head. As for what he is wearing is a pair of crimson ninja sandals that led into a pair of black ninja pants, with his eight sage circles going down the outside of his pants, with the first ring being black, with a thin lining of red on the inside, on a patch of mahogany colored cloth to make it visible, a second looking like that of a snake eating its tail with a forest and emerald green back and wide underbelly, the third had an outside of a faded yellow with a gray green color accenting, the fourth was a mini plesiosaur curled in on itself with a sea green color, the fifth ring looked like an albino white werewolf in a curve with a half moon, that gave it the appearance of it chasing the moon, the sixth ring was a stone gray with a brown wooden bark color lining the inside of the ring, the seventh ring was bleached bone white and gave the appearance of being composed of actual bones, the last ring was comprised of a gray flesh color with black stitches running in a crisscross pattern along the ring. For future reference this is the new appearance of the circles and he hid the bottom of his legs after the last circle wrapped in yellow bandages. Holding his pants up was a white fur utility belt that had kunai and shuriken sealed in it, with lots more room for future tools and weapons. For a shirt you could see a sea green scaled shirt wrapped under a black cloak with his eight circles on his back with a crimson orange fox head with the kanji for nine on its forehead. After he was sure they were done taking in his new outfit he started speaking, now this diner is going to take place in my summons realm, the boss of each of your clans was invited and has already shown up and started talking amongst the others. Now if you all will so kindly put your hands on my shoulder I shall take you there as well. At that bit of information, the age cage, Shikamaru and his family grabbed onto his left shoulder with Asuma, Shino, and his family grabbed his right shoulder. With everyone grabbed on he did the summoning jutsu, and they all vanished in a poof of smoke. When the smoke cleared their vision they were in a well-decorated stone room that had two doors one with a seaweed green rug in front of it and the other with what looked like a shrunken head on the handle, the room had a full-size bed with blood-red silk sheets and two pitch black pillows at the head of the bed, a dresser and a wardrobe, the full body mirror with what looks like two slide-out mirrors that allow a 360 degree view of oneself. Just as they were finished observing a knock came from the door with a shrunken head. Are you all ready for dinner the clan's getting a little impatient. Dracula said through the door. At this both Naruto and Hiruzen pale at the implications and quickly usher everyone out into the hall. Ah good to see you all my name is Dracula acting boss of the monster summoning clan. Now if you will follow me to the dining hall he said with a bow and then turning lead the group to the dining room. As the group approached they could hear the chatter coming from the other side of the door and it was monstrous. Pun totally intended as the doors swung open the group of humans besides Naruto are left speechless at the sight before them. Right in front of them had to be the largest variety of creatures all in view, and there are more tables the further the halls go down. Now as the last of our guests arrive we hold this feast for the prominence of tomorrow, as our summoner has taken the first step in becoming a ninja, and so we shall celebrate like there is not tomorrow tonight and come morning, we will train to fight for battles yet to come as we fight alongside our summoner, as we aid him in his time of need and bring with us a new age of prosperity for young Naruto. Dracula said as he sat down now let us give a hearty toast to new friends and allies from the beetle clan led by Kamadao, the deer clan led by Carla, and last but not least the monkey clan led by Enma. Dracula said as the party geared up in full swing. As the party was ragging on the cage tapped on Dracula's shoulder and asked if he was allowed to say a few words. With a nod of the head and one attention grabbing shot the floor was the aged cages. As of Naruto officially becoming a genin I am now permitted, as per his parents' will, to give him all of his mother's belongings, consisting of a small cabin and scrolls containing who knows what. My best guess is that it would be what the Yuzumaki clan was known for which was sealing. The professor stated and then sitting back down to continue eating the scrumptious food provided at the feast. Well thank you for that information, Hiruzen, now with that information we can more focus on what section of the clan for him to study under first. Dracula said causing lots of loud splashes to sound from farther down the hall, and Ness having a predatory grin on his face. 
Thanks to that information he can start tutelage under Ness and all the other monsters under the water portion of the contract. Dracula stated with a little bit of sadness to his tone. What do you mean start training under the water portion of the clan? Hiruzen asked. Well, you see when he signed the contract and passed all the tests we wouldn't start his actual ninja training until he became a genin, hence why we had him learn history and whatnot. Dracula stated. I'll take over from here Drac. Now we held a meeting to determine how ninja training would actually go, because of the fact that while he could make enough clones to learn everything at a fast rate, all that information has a large chance of making him like the boss Ness said. So to avoid this scenario we decided we would have him trained by a branch of the contract, which could then train him in all of their fields of expertise, before moving to the next group. We were going to make it a contest of sorts, and each present a gift that he could accept and then train under that branch, and we will still provide those gifts when he gets to that section of the contract. Ness finished before turning the attention back to Dracula, and the reason he will start with the water contract is that they have one of our two seal masters, the other is part of the Japanese section of the contract he said, we have K-A-R-L pronounced like Carl, said Ness, and we have Kira spoke Sato. And the reason you start with the water contract and not the Japanese is because Kira has a more advanced version of sealing that requires what Carl can teach young Naruto spoke Frank so what was the water clan's gift? Asked Asuma we of the Water Clan have made together a shield of shed scales that can repair any damage to it, as long as there is water nearby, and the shield has at least one scale left, it is also lightweight and can stop all but well-crafted blades and blades, enhanced with Winter Earth Chakra Ness bragged. But the party back in full swing after the announcement with the members of the Water Clan even louder because they would get to be the first to train their summoner first. Drac went over to the other members of the council and asked, do you think it's time he meets the boss of the contract? But the nod from all other members, he went to make another announcement, my fellow clansmen and women I and the rest of the council believe it is time for our summoner to meet the boss of the contract. With a roar of approval from everyone and even some aerial tricks from the gargoyles and dragons up above, Dracula led the group of humans and the three other boss summonses behind him to the meeting hall. The boss of the contract has been asleep since before the nine-tailed beasts were created by the sage of the six paths he said as he moved down the staircase to the others, as the torch's light grew only a little as they passed and dimmed after they left. We hid him away down here for protection in case any other summon were to cause a war with us or form a rivalry like the toad and snake clan. He continued. Silence rung around them the only sound coming from their footsteps as they went down the spiral staircase until they came to a landing with a gigantic cherry wood door easily 35 feet tall and another set of stairs heading straight down. What's down those stairs? Asked Naruto those lead to a seal system set up by Kira to call back monsters that used to be part of the contract, but when they found out the boss wasn't waking up till we had a summoner, they struck out on their own and said that when we have an actual summoner and the boss was awake, could we call them back? Dracula answered, so what exactly is the boss of the contract? Hiruzen asked. Without saying a word, he opened the door. All of them. Even the summoning clan bosses gasped. Wait a moment I remember reading about him or at least his myth. Naruto exclaimed, is he a cockatrice? He asked, the one and only. Dracula stated with a smirk, though his thoughts went rampant at what he has been seeing is it possible all that excess chakra he's been putting into the summoning jutsu has actually been the boss refilling his reserves. His breathing has gotten lighter and he's actually looking very healthy again. So, what's his name? Naruto said interrupting all of Drac's thoughts that is a question he has to deem you worthy for when he wakes up he responded, and everyone fell silent to contemplate what they are seeing, and it was a truly magnificent sight. There laying before them was a 55-foot long mix and match of animal parts, where it had the head of a rooster, the body of a reptile and a snake's tail, it had three long gashes across its eye, and what looked to be folded up dragon wings to its side with rooster legs and feet. Hey, I see some books back there what is in those. Asuma said pointing to a string of bookcases past the mighty boss, and each shelf was packed full of books. Those are his memories, Kira also removed them and put them in books, so as to take strain off his brain while he heals, and to ensure he didn't forget any when he woke up, Dracula said as he peeked around to see that five of the original fifty bookcases were gone, meaning he absorbed the knowledge back and when the seals deemed his brain stable enough to start giving him his memories back. Now let us get back to the celebration he said. At that everyone turned around and walked back to the party and enjoyed the rest of the night. The next morning at 7 in the morning you can find Team 10 at their training ground, waiting for their sensei to show up. 10 minutes later and a poof of smoke comes out in front of them with their sensei inside of it. 
Oh right team this is how I figured we would set up the training every other day, when we're not on C rank missions or above, we will train together as a team in the morning, and do a handful of D rank missions, till we have the required 30 as a team to go on a C rank mission, Asuma stated then on that off day, we will each be training individually Naruto with his summons, and Shikamaru and Shino with their clans, now saying that I will be taking those days to train myself on this field, and so if you need help with anything during those days, you'll know where to find me he finished. So what day is today? Naruto asked. Today we will do some teamwork exercise until lunch, then pick up a few missions. Asuma responded. Five hours after that was said you could see Shino and Shikamaru panting hard Naruto looking like he was wheezing, and Asuma with a light sheen of sweet. Now that we got it out of the way we'll rest and eat lunch until one, then we'll go to the mission's office. Not 50 minutes later do we find the team standing in front of the mission room ready to take on their first mission. Well for missions today we have clean up a farmer's field of rocks, catch Tora, walk the Inuzuka's hounds, clean the Inuzuka's kennels, mow a counselor's grass, and babysit an ambassador's kid while he's at a meeting. Bichunin said from behind the counter may we have the farmer's field and catch Tora to start please. Naruto stated before Asuma could say anything. Alright here you are do you mind if I ask why the catch Tora mission? The Chunin asked while handing the scrolls to Asuma. Because I have just the thing to catch the little devil Naruto said with a chuckle. So, the young team heads to catch Tora first and foremost, alright Naruto what's your plan? Shikamaru asked after they were at the last reported area of where Tora was seen. Well, we have two options to track her down and two options to capture her. He started and since this is supposed to be teamwork based we will have a combination of the two, we will have a group of my summons, and she knows bugs track it down, and then my summons will surround it stealthily, and cut off any routes of escape, then I figured Shikamaru you could catch it with your shadow possession, and I'll carry the thing back. What summon are you going to use? Asuma asked summoning Jutsu Naruto said, and when the smoke vanished only Asuma and Naruto could see what was happening what happened nothing's there. Shikamaru asked that's where you are wrong my insects feel something there, but I don't see it, Shino said equally as confused that's because aside from me being their summoner they're completely invisible to anyone under Chunin and their target, though there is a way to circumvent that. After Naruto said that both Shino and Shikamaru felt something lick their hands, and then the air started wavering, and they could now see nine hellhounds the size of a mountain lion standing right in front of them. They were as black as a cloud-covered midnight, with collars made out of black leather, a red name tag on each of them, and red eyes that pierced the very soul. These are hellhounds originally there were so many that they really didn't have much room on their island to move, so they fought each other until only the nine before you remained, and just as these nine were about to fight again, Dracula found the island and brought them back to the clan's home Naruto explained. And while they regret most of it after all, they did become more powerful because of them absorbing all the other souls when they died, and so with it they push forward in their honor. And with that Shino took it as his silent cue to release more insects to track down Tora, as eight of the hellhounds split up in search of the cat. Why did that one stay behind Naruto? Asuma asked. Well to lead us to the cat if one of the other hellhounds finds it, their callers let them communicate with each other over any distance Naruto answered. Can you not communicate with them? Shino asked. To Shino it was a weird concept to not be able to hear the dogs and was thus compelled to ask. No, I can't Dracula said I'd need a collar just like theirs, but they're trying to see if they can make one like a belt or a bracelet. Naruto responded and with that they slipped into silence. After the brief pause both Shino and the hellhound turn their head in a specific direction, and as the hellhound starts heading there, Shino says we need to hurry I think the cat can smell the hounds and is more skittish. At that they race to see the cat in a clearing, and the hellhounds just out of a normal person's and animal's view around the clearing evenly distanced to cut off lines of escape, alright guess I'm up, Shikamaru said as he walked closer to the edge of the clearing, and started the jutsu to stretch his shadow, and shadow possession jutsu successful. And with the cat frozen there Naruto picks him up by the scruff and dismisses all but two hellhounds. They're going to follow in case someone has any ideas about running Naruto spoke, as he made sure Tora could see both hellhounds. Thanks to the escort of two hellhounds Tora smartly decided to not run away or put up a fight. Alright if you could put her into the carrier we will give her back to the Fire Lord's wife. The Chunin said as he logged down Team 10 successful retrieve Tora mission. And with a dramatic wave of the hands and off to the fields we go. Naruto exclaimed in a flamboyant fashion, causing the people present to sweet drop. It only took them 10 minutes to get to the field, and considering the capture Tora mission only took an hour they were looking good on time. So, I need this farm free of rocks so I can start making sure the ground is ready for the next planting. The farmer said pointing behind the four to a 13 acer farm behind them. Now usually I have farm hands to do this, but with a recent sandstorm and Suna destroying all their crops, they all left to go do work over there. He continued dragging their attention back to him. 
Well, how about we make this interesting Naruto says, out of the four of us whoever picks up and get rid of the least number of rocks and debris has to pay for dinner when we call it a day. Naruto said to the team. Alright I'm game. Said Asuma with the other two nodding we each start in a corner and we start when my summons go, poof said Naruto summoning four hellhounds. When everyone was in their corners and the hellhounds went poof, everyone started working inwards to clean as much of the field as possible, Shino using his insects to clear large sections all at once Asuma using his speed to go at a mid in pace, Shikamaru used his shadow possession to rip any and all debris when he was surrounded by it, and Naruto was doing the most cleaning after summoning four baby rock golems, only coming up to three feet in height, and summoning around a thousand clones, was he clearing acers fast. The work was finished at two and a half hours putting the time at 4.30 in the afternoon. Alright write down how much you cleared and we'll see who cleared the most Asuma said covered in a heavy sheen of sweat, Shino and Shikamaru were both panting in exhaustion but complied with the request, Naruto looked the best out of all of them, with him breathing hard as the only sign he was affected at all. Right and it looks like. I'm paying for dinner. Asuma said we're reading the numbers right they both beat me by one thing of debris each. Asuma spoke with a quiver in his voice well the job's done, and I believe we have enough time to do one more mission, Sensei Naruto spoke getting a mild glare from both of his teammates, because of how exhausted they were. Oh, quit your belly aching the sooner we complete 30 of these chores, the sooner we can go on higher ranked missions, Naruto stated, causing both of them to sigh at the fact that he was right besides we should work up a big appetite, since Sensei is paying for it, he continued nonchalantly enticing grumblings from said man. So, you have completed two missions and want to go on another. The Chunin asks Yup we want to finish those 30 prerequisites Naruto chirped happily. Well, no new missions have come in yet, but some have been taken the only ones left are capture Tora and mow some grass at a counselor's house he stated looking at the last two scrolls. Why has Tora escaped again? The Genin asked in unison well you see, it doesn't really like being hugged to death and that's what she does. He whispered to the Genin in that case we'll take both if you're alright with that. Naruto stated, as long as it's good with your sensei. The Chunin said wanting confirmation from Asuma. With a nod from his head, they left the tower and once out of public view he turned to his team. Naruto turned around and cut off his two teammates' arguments. How would we as a team not like to go on D-ranks ever again? At the mention of never having to do the chores ever again both his teammates held their tongue and Asuma to look interested. I can make solid clones which could transform into us and do the D-ranks all day as we train on our team days and as a plus we can get more done in a shorter amount of time and get on C-ranks faster than any other team and all we need to do is visit the office in the morning and from there I load the clones with enough chakra to last all day. At this both Shikamaru and Shino said the same thing let's do it after both their confirmations, they all turned to Asuma with an unspoken question, asking if they would receive his blessing to actually go through with this plan. I would go through with this plan on one condition he stated, you practice meditation for the hour before you pop the clones to lessen the effect of the memory backlash, Asuma said with a grin. And what will you be doing during this time? Asked Naruto to make sure his sensei wasn't going to show blatant favoritism. Well Shino needs to work on increasing his reserves, so as you're practicing meditation, I figured his beetles could sap off of your large chakra reserves, giving Shino's reserves time to build without feeding it all to his bugs, well he's doing that Shikamaru, and I will play Shogi until you guys are done. This allows to train him on thinking several moves ahead, which will be helpful in a battle Asuma finished, that was all I needed Naruto said, followed by two shot shadow clone Jutsu, summoning Jutsu, and with that, eight clones appeared with two of each transforming into Shino, Shikamaru, and Asuma, and two staying as Naruto. That and with two of the hellhounds right those are two teams one will catch Tora the other will go cut grass Naruto stated, now then as I remember we are getting treated to dinner right sensei. The next day was a training day, and right away Naruto River summoned himself, and instead of his room at the castle, he was on a seashore with an ocean in front of him, and a large lagoon filled with freshwater several miles behind him. Ness's head raised out of the sea, and he began talking ah good you're here Naruto, follow me he said turning around and seeming to go to a specific spot on the water, his head sticking out of the water. As he came to a spot above the water he spoke again, now we shall start your training for the day, but before we start anything we need you to change cloths to something that will allow faster movement in water he said, diving his head down for a few seconds and popping back up with googles, a wet suit and an air mask and tank in black with orange spirals dotting the suit here and there, after quickly reverse summoning twice more to drop his other outfit at home and change he was ready to go now. You will only need the googles, air tank, and mask for a little bit today, as Carl will draw a seal on you that will convert your chakra into oxygen and give you clear vision underwater, after that seal is applied, you will be able to take both of those off. Before we dive make 300 clones and leave them up here to train with other sea creatures who swim by and myself you personally will be visiting and studying underwater with Carl until you can master what he teaches you. 
Ness said as he watched Naruto try and get comfortable in the wetsuit. It'll take some time to get used to it so until then let's just go down and introduce you to Carl, and with that statement, Ness started to dive down, followed shortly by Naruto. Naruto was amazed by what he saw in front of him, and that was a variety of mythical fish and sea monsters swimming about their day, and even some normal types of fish, and such he could faintly see a big, shadowed outline of a whale or two in the distance. Breathtaking isn't it? A voice said behind him with Ness floating below Naruto rolling his eyes at what he was doing. Turning around to greet what he could only presume was Carl he saw nothing. Well as you two get acquainted I'll go ahead and train the clones Ness said starting to head back to the surface. Oh, but you're going to miss his reaction the voice whined behind Naruto. Spinning around he saw nothing there again, if you want me to stay for his reaction reveal yourself so you two can start your introductions, Ness countered floating above Naruto, only after he takes his mask and googles off, I already wrote the seal on him, the boy spoke from below him this time, but looking down there was again nothing there Naruto go ahead and take off your googles, mask, and air tank Ness spoke up. Showing skepticism but nonetheless trusting Ness did as instructed. After taking off the mask he found he could breathe as easily as he was on land, and after the googles came off he found he could see better without them on. Now kid look behind you, Carl spoke as he deactivated his camouflage ability. Turning around once again Naruto stared in shock as how this thing was able to camouflage so well. Floating behind him was an octopus so big that it looked like it could crush boats in half without any effort. Just as he was about to speak Carl began to shrink down to the size of a normal octopus size altering seals they allow bigger animals to shrink down to more well fit sizes, but we can't grow past our natural size, not that we need two of course, the two of the water contract that have it is myself and Joe I believe he goes by now. Carl spoke answering his unasked question. When did you write the seal on me Naruto asked as the swam down I actually engraved it into your lungs by releasing trace amounts of ink into the water and sending it to your mask, I controlled it to go into your lungs after I had enough, I just simply engraved it as you were looking for me, and because of that your mind didn't register any pain, as its one focus was to find me Carl explained as they entered what looked to be an underwater sea cave. We will do your training in here because you have to use paper as you can't produce ink like me. Carl said as he led him to a desk that had lots of blank scrolls to one side and a giant bat of ink on the other, on the desk lay a variety of pens to dip into the ink and light seemed to be pouring into the room from what looked like a seal of some sort. So, would you mind making a couple of seals for me now and take a look at my own seal? Naruto asked. At that Naruto lifted his shirt and channeled chakra into it to make the seal visible. After he went up and touched the seal his eyes glassed over for a few minutes. Well then I got good news and bad news. Carl said after his eyes returned to normal. The good news is that if you die the kickbitties too so at least for self-preservation purposes, he will lend you chakra in life-threatening scenarios Carl stated, the bad news is twofold, one you chakra will be unbalanced and harder to control, until the kickbee gets the other half of his chakra back, more than likely sealed in the fourth hookage's resting place, if the story the council said was true. The second is that with the way the seal is set up is to slowly filter the chakra into yours and get you used to it, thus making your chakra even harder to control. Carl said and he was about to tell his solution to the second part before he noticed that Naruto's eyes were glazed over. Alright listen up brat, I would so love to get out of here, but if what that squid said is true, we're stuck with each other. So, I offer you a deal to make this a semi-workable relationship, the kickbee boomed out as soon as Naruto was in front of him. I require several things to make this work 1 change this kami forsaken scenery, 2 get the squid to fix the filter, because the way it's draining my chakra is like a mosquito sucking chakra out of something as large as that boss summon you have, 3 get the squid to set up a sensory linking seal, or loosen the full seal a little, so I can at least see the outside and smell and taste again, 4 when I get my other half of chakra I will start training you at night while your body rests. It spoke before letting its container speak since the first time it got here. Ok 1 how do I change the scenery, 2 that filter is prepping my body to handle your chakra 3 that sounds reasonable, but I can see some drawbacks to that, 4 wouldn't that just leave me mentally tired. Naruto spoke after determining that it was speaking the truth, it's your mind you have control over the scenery, 2 that seal is doing jack to help you build a resistance, 3 what drawbacks, and 4 no because after I get my second half and the filter removed your chakra won't be in flux 24 7, meaning it will finally be calm during the night, and doing the training will make it seem to your brain that nothing has changed, causing you to wake up as refreshed or better as you have been for years. After he was done speaking the surrounding area rippled, then another, then another, until a wave of chakra swept by blinding the tailed beast for a few seconds. When it opened its eyes again it was amazed at the scenery change. What was once a sower was now a very lush forest with trees tall enough to be bigger than him at full size, he could hear some giant game for him to hunt, such as rabbits and deer, he also heard the sound of other foxes over in the distance. 
he could smell that instead of being water on the ground of the sower, his host's chakra turned into a large lake with a waterfall, constantly adding more to it, causing it to expand and go deeper. Through the treetop's canopy, he could feel the artificial sunlight hitting his fur. This is the best mindscape I've been in, and I had two containers before you. Bikipi said while stretching his legs for the first time in a long time well, I will let you have fun in here and relay your message to Carl, Naruto said as he slowly vanished from view. This is definitely the one father talked about he thought before catching sight of a rabbit and giving chase for the first time in forever actually enjoying the thrill of the hunt. So how did it go? Carl asked seeing as how the glassed over look was fading from Naruto's eyes. The Kikbi wants to know if you could remove the filter and loosen the seal a little to give him sensory access to smell and taste and whatnot. That is certainly doable Carl said. I will do that before you go home after today to let your body adapt overnight, because while loosening the seal isn't an issue and removing the filter isn't either it does have the potential to have some adverse effects on your body, such as your chakra pathways may expand again, which will give you a larger chakra reserve, and with that they went over to the desk to get started. The bee continued. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.